In November 2020, the Black Sea territory of Abkhazia was hit by a series of rolling blackouts caused by a spike in demand for electricity that overwhelmed the grid. It was blamed on an unlikely culprit, cryptocurrency mining farms. Energy-hungry computers running non-stop to mine for digital gold. The blackouts prompted a crackdown and a ban on mining. Crypto mining surged in Abkhazia because of its cheap electricity, which crypto miners use a lot of. It's been widely reported that Bitcoin alone uses more energy than some countries, along with warnings of its sizable carbon footprint. But others point to rough data and bigger emitters, and believe that a decentralized digital currency is worth the relatively small energy cost. So what kind of impact do cryptocurrencies have on climate change? And what can be done to reduce it? First, let's answer a simple question. Why do some cryptocurrencies use so much energy to begin with? It comes back to a process called proof of work. I think uh, most people will know that as mining, it's the process of creating new blocks for Bitcoin's blockchain. You can think of a blockchain as a list of transactions recorded in chunks called blocks. Blockchains are decentralized. So instead of a bank or government, they're managed by a global network of miners who record and verify the blocks of transactions and are rewarded with newly minted cryptocurrency. That's why it's called mining. But before they can add a new block, they have to play a kind of lottery. Each block comes with a mystery number, and the first miner to guess the right number gets to mine the block and obtain the reward. And the only way of doing that is trial and error, just iterate through a whole lot of numbers, 160 quintillion every second of the day, and that's where the energy consumption problem is. But this inefficiency is a security feature. In order to attack the network, you'd have to spend more computing power and more energy than it'd be worth. The energy usage of a cryptocurrency changes all the time, but Bitcoins alone currently accounts for about half a percent of global energy consumption. That's more than Sweden, but less energy than is used by idle household electronics in America each year. But Bitcoin isn't the only energy-hungry cryptocurrency. And if you take all cryptocurrencies that are made like Bitcoin with proof-of-work mining, it adds roughly 50% on top of what Bitcoin is consuming in terms of energy. So proof-of-work uses lots of energy. But what about the carbon footprint? That's complicated and really hard to figure out because even the best available data is currently incomplete and imprecise. We don't know what Bitcoin's carbon outlay is today, frankly. People use old data for this, they use incomplete data sets, but we don't have genuine knowledge of that. We can have guesses. Well, there's a lot of limitations because it's very hard, like we can't just go around and get the electricity bill of all these mines, we don't even know where they're all located. Even then, energy consumption itself doesn't give you a carbon footprint. Each power source emits a different amount of carbon to produce the same amount of energy. That's its carbon intensity. So to find the carbon footprint, you need to know where miners are getting their energy. The most recent data on this comes from the University of Cambridge's survey of about a third of the mining network from spring of 2020. They found that over three quarters of miners used renewables as a part of their mix, but that nearly two thirds of their energy came from fossil fuels. That doesn't say a whole lot because it doesn't give you a carbon intensity. It just says that, okay, a majority is using a dirty fuel source. You can get a rough idea of a cryptocurrency's footprint from the carbon intensity of the grids that miners are likely plugged into. You just need to find out where they are. Most miners were located in these 10 countries in the spring of 2020, according to the most recent data from the University of Cambridge. Most mining happens here in China, particularly in these provinces consuming cheap surplus hydropower in Sichuan and Yunnan during the wet season, and moving north during the dry season. Primarily to the provinces of Xinjiang and Inner Mongolia, where there's an abundance of coal, and of course that's a very dirty source of energy. It's been reported that crypto mining in China threatens the country's climate targets, and the province of Inner Mongolia recently banned mining to rein in its energy consumption. We're seeing trends for hash rate leaving China, these assumptions that Bitcoin's hash rate follows the generic China uh, carbon setup, that's not a good assumption. So taking the data with a grain of salt, we have a rough estimate for a carbon footprint. 
around 50 million metric tons of carbon, which is comparable to a country like uh, Hong Kong. It's, it's definitely not a negligible amount. However, even if Bitcoin's network were powered entirely by coal, its footprint would still be just a small fraction of global emissions. The first thing you can say is, okay, it doesn't matter how small the amount, if it's a waste, it's still a waste. Uh, second thing is, this amount isn't going to stay at that level. We have seen a significant price increase at the start of 2021. That means that the energy consumption of the network will also continue to grow. That's because the higher the price of Bitcoin, the higher the reward for mining, meaning more computers in the network. Suppose the price goes up another 10 times, you could be talking about 5% or more of global emissions just for cryptocurrency mining. So what does all of this mean for the sustainability of cryptocurrencies? And can anything be done to reduce their carbon footprint in the future? Well, the solution can actually be really simple. You replace the mining with a greener alternative that doesn't require computational power. And we don't even have to invent that. It already exists. It's already being used by a range of cryptocurrencies. That green alternative is called proof of stake, which allocates blocks based on distribution of wealth rather than computational power. So there is no incentive to use a whole lot of specialized equipment that uses tons of energy. Ethereum, the world's second largest cryptocurrency, is already working on switching over to proof of stake, and many think Bitcoin should follow suit. But not everybody is sold on the idea. Frankly, if you look at the track record of proof of stake, it's terrible with regards to centralization. Uh, what proof of stake actually means is if you control more wealth in the system, you have more political power. Virtually all Bitcoiners are adamantly opposed to it. And that may prove an insurmountable challenge because you're talking about a distributed network where nobody is in charge. Nobody can say from tomorrow we'll be using this greener alternative. You need to get everyone on board to actually make that change. Another solution could be getting miners to ditch fossil fuels for renewables. The problem comes with weaning miners off of the cheap, reliable power generally provided by fossil fuels. Miners will often negotiate directly with a power plant for a cheaper price, often buying so-called stranded energy, which would otherwise go to waste, such as with excess hydropower in Yunnan and Sichuan during the wet season. But it's not just hydro. Some miners take power from flared methane gas, an unused byproduct of the oil industry, seen by some as an eco-friendly practice, but by critics as perpetuating fossil fuels. If you're turning that into a usable product, you're making fossil fuel extraction more profitable. A couple of shuttered fossil fuel plants have been reopened to power crypto mining, raising some questions about whether renewables besides hydro can meet mining's appetite for cheap, reliable energy. What should happen here is we should have a bit of a reckoning about the greenness or the carbon intensity of our grid itself, as opposed to trying to restrict the consumption of energy. At the end of the day, it's going to come down to can policymakers organize the grid such that it's sustainable. At the policy level, a price on carbon could incentivize more development of renewable energy and provide more cheap, reliable, and clean electricity to decarbonize mining and other industries. In the meantime, more transparency and data are needed to get a better sense of the network's energy mix and carbon footprint. I think the burden probably is on the Bitcoin community to surface better data about this. Currently, there are a bunch of industry initiatives. Cambridge is refreshing their data set. Ultimately, what it comes down to is a question of value. Is a decentralized, stateless currency system like Bitcoin worth the energy cost? And in my view, there, it, it doesn't even matter because there's never a good reason to be wasting energy, even if it's a small amount. <laughs> I think in many, many cases, the energy debate is just a substitute for the real debate, which is, does Bitcoin have utility? Is it good for society? If you reject Bitcoin's utility or validity, then you most likely believe that any energy expenditure is a waste.